Hello and welcome to Scare to a Sunday Synopsis for Sunday, April the 18th. So there's been quite a lot going on this week, so let's dive straight into the news. So first up, we exclusively revealed all of the Scare Kingdom graphics for the next three events. So that's their Halloween event, uh, the Christmas Festival and their Valentera. They are going for a bit of a rebrand with each of those. So uh, while I'm talking here, you'll see all the different um, lineup from... Halloween, Christmas and Valent Valentine's Day all coming along the screen. So they look really cool, uh, really ex uh, excited to uh, see them announce everything going forward for the next year. So um, yeah, hopefully they've all scrolled past by now. Also this week, Primeval announced what was going on with their event. So uh, they're going ahead. Uh, the, one of the big things is Insanatorium is coming back. Uh, for those who don't know, I was one of the original, uh, I helped uh, create and come up with some of the ideas for Primeval back oh, 10, 12 years ago or whenever it was. Uh, so it's good to see Insanatorium back. It's going to be uh, very similar to the original maze um, with strobe lights, but it sounds like they're going to be using the, um, the headphones, the silent disco that they used in Arachnophobia, uh, not last year, the year before, and that was something that was really unique. Uh, and also, when we look at their website, we also see that the Mayhem Manor Sleep Tight, which is their hotel, um, a haunted house or, or scare attraction, um, that is promising that you will have some sort of lantern. So I don't know whether this is haunted lantern. It's not confirmed who's actually using the, the technology. But yeah, it looks like there will be some sort of light that can be controlled during that experience, either a torch or a lantern. So that will be interesting. Uh, this week also saw the launch of Blacktown Screen Park, a new event in Newcastle. Uh, we had um, some screen time with the creators. Uh, they're a young, enthusiastic um, couple that are, are really trying to do something new and different. So as we get more news about that and uh, you know update of where that is, but we understand that's going to be in Newcastle for an area that um, for a long time didn't really have many scare attractions. is getting really quite popular up there. Uh, this week has also seen the dates of the dungeon opening. Now, obviously, the next stage of lockdown uh, relaxation rules is due on the 17th of May, Monday the 17th, which is four weeks away now. Uh, so for that, all the UK dungeons or all the English dungeons are planned to reopen on the 17th of May. At the moment, Edinburgh is scheduled to open on the 1st of May. Obviously, Scotland has slightly different rules to us in England. Um, at the moment, none of the European uh, dungeons have announced any dates yet because obviously uh, the cases of coronavirus and the number of people vaccinated in Europe is a lot lower than here in the UK. And also York Dungeon have started their walking tours. This is a chance to experience some of the history of York and uh, with some of the characters and they will be doing that up until the time uh, that the dungeon is able to open. If it's popular, they may continue doing it after that. Uh, this week also saw the announcement of the Alp by Panic Room Gravesend. So Panic Room Gravesend, they do a lot of escape rooms and they've got a new horror themed online game called the Alp. Also have the House of Frankenstein um, in Bath. They're due to open in June, but they are now doing a a walk as part of the bar festival and as part of this walk they're going to talk about the history of frankenstein how mary shelley came to bath how she wrote the book and they are promising that you you may well get a sneak preview of the house of frankenstein attraction as part of that tour so uh those uh walks go ahead in may this week has also obviously seen the theme parks reopen with fort park and uh alton towers obviously Fort Park, the indoor attractions like Black Mirror Labyrinth, uh, Walking Dead and Darren Brown's Ghost Train haven't opened yet. Over at Alton Towers, it's quite interesting. Um, what we've heard, we haven't been up there, but what we've heard is that uh, Toxic Junkyard has been taken down. All of the scaffolding around Nemesis Subterra, which was obviously there for Project 42, has all been removed. Um, and then even though their people couldn't get inside the towers, it looked like the opening queue line for the attic has also been removed. The only sign of anything uh, Scarefest seems to be uh, Darkest Steps is still stood standing over in the corner, um, right over um, by the towers where it was. So yeah, interesting. I was, I was kind of expecting Toxic Junkyard to stay up, 
Uh, I know it's a little bit ugly from the outside, but they've obviously removed that. So we'll have to see whether that comes back this year or not. Obviously, it was a great event, uh, a great attraction. So um, it would be great to see it back. But um, obviously, hopefully, social distancing and indoor and outdoor experiences might change. So we don't know. It might have only just been a one year experience. Uh, this week has also seen uh, a teaser for Spooky World. They just launched a video saying that they are coming back. Uh, we had a great time there last year. Be interesting to see if they keep the route, uh, the single route that they had last last um, year instead of the screen park at, um, approach. We actually preferred it. I think it was it was better to just walk all the way around and do all of the mazes in line. But then, you know they might continue that, or they might just go back to how they were. And also, Road to Hell um, have teased in his Road 2, with a, you know, a number 2. Uh, Road to Hell will be back this Christmas at the heart of England Convention Centre. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what they do there. They're going to make it bigger and better, they're saying. So, finally, yes, we actually got out to a scare attraction on Friday. We went to Fairfield at Thornton Hall Country Park. Uh, the video of that is already up. Uh, the review will be going up uh, slightly later on today or tomorrow. Um, but yeah, that was a really good event. We had such a good time. It was just nice to be out, be scared, be out of the house. Um, so well done to the people there uh, who put that on. And um, we shall see over the next few weeks more and more events and things start to open. So obviously the internal attractions like Passage del Terror will be able to open in May. As we mentioned about the dungeons opening. Uh, and it does, fingers crossed, look like uh, we may well be getting back to normal. So um, I think the next big scare attraction event uh, lined up is uh, Walpurgis Night for Scare Kingdom, which was bounced from the March date into, uh, I think it's June, actually the 5th of June. Um, obviously Scream Camp is now up and running for sale. I think the retreat is running. Uh, so yeah, there's plenty of uh, chance to get your scare on. Uh, lots of scare, lots of scary escape rooms will be opening up in May as well. So with that, we are going to sign off. Don't forget to, if you like the videos, to click the subscribe button. I think it's down there, depending on which way the video comes out. There or there. Click the subscribe button or the bell to get notifications. Um, we will have lots more content like the Fearfields uh, video, the first review content. We've got a few other things planned coming out soon, so uh, just keep following. Don't forget to follow Scareter, www.scareter.co.uk and join us on our Instagram where at least on a Friday we have a fun sort of um, guest survey. So join us in, on there. So with that, we're going to sign off. We're going to say see you next week and have a great day in the sun. See you soon.